What's going on? This is Afro Think Tank. Today, I want to talk about class. Class. And having some class. And how us African people need to have more class about ourselves. Right? And when I say class, I don't mean white European class. I don't mean cutting your hair down short so you can conform to whiteness or white Western standards class. I'm talking about African class. And that's one thing we need to take back because class and having class about you adds value to you as an individual. And that's and, and as African Americans, let, let me be let me be very clear to you about this thing that we that we embrace, that the world embrace, thinking that it comes from us, which is this gangster ghetto hood booger Pookie and Ray Ray culture. OK, I want you to listen to me very, very clearly. This is a fact. This is a actual fact. That's why history is important to understand the context of why we do the things that we do now. The way you see African Americans advertised on TV, the way the perception of of the culture of the Pookie and the Ray Ray of the ghetto, that whole thing that we're famous for, the thing that rappers glorify, that whole lower class culture, right? That is. Southern European culture. Listen to me. That's Southern European culture. As a historian, I'm telling you, that is Southern European culture. You see, the South, the Europeans that came to the South were from the UK. All right. You got to remember, what we call white people are Europeans from various different parts of Europe. Right. You have the island of the United Kingdom. Then you have the Europe, the Europe Peninsula. It's not even a continent. All right, that's the thing about it. Uh, they, they're so they're so egotistical and brash. They made the Asian Peninsula a continent, even though it doesn't even fit a continent by the, their own definition of what a continent is. But the culture that you see. All right, have you ever watched? Um, have you ever watched those old medieval, medieval movies and Netflix series? Like even if you watch Game of Thrones or if you watch any of uh, HBO's Rome or or any of any of those shows that depict middle 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 um, middle middle age time, the dark ages or whatnot, and keep in mind the dark ages when the Anglo-Saxon European all of a sudden gained power. That's when they got power, right? If you look at their culture, right, thuggery, gangsterism, the whole the whole thing, that's theirs. When they came to the Americas to work, right, the poor white people from the United Kingdom from Wales, from Manchester, from London, those people, right? They brought that culture to America. Africans, who had African culture at the time, was forced to live and be with these poor white people. You see, the white people that enslaved us, they was the ones who had class, you see. They were the aristocrats, the politicians, the multi-millionaires at the time. They, they weren't... They had class, right? European class. But the ones that we interact with mostly on a daily basis, all the way down to the the the, the overseer, all right? The overseer, the one who used to, you had the overseer, then you had the one that, the cracker, all right? The cracker was the one black guy who got the best butter biscuits for keeping the black people in line. And above him, you had the poor white man. They gave him a horse and a shotgun, right? And his job was to keep control of the black people. His, that was his job, right? He was damn near an indentured servant himself, basically, for the most part, right? And so those are the Europeans we interacted with. And over time, as they stripped us of our language, our culture, our sense of ourselves, our identity, we picked on the identities of those we are around, those who we lived with. Black people lived with these poor white people. Poor white people were right here. If slaves were right here, poor white people were just right here. They were right. They were above us, but they were still touching us. You understand? That's the thing. They were above us, but they were still touching us. They was getting beat too. Did they had? But it was within their own group. It was something different, right? At first, we was like this until the Bacon Rebellion, and then the aristocrats put those poor white people just above us, just a little bit. Just look. Just a little bit, right? Like right there. Matter of fact, 
They still right here. And they, and they so brainwashed, they don't even realize it. Right? So we picked on this persona. You know, we start picking up their traits. I mean, this is what we see. This is how it works. Culture changes, right? Culture is, is something that's a constant. It's always changing. So we started to pick up the habits of these Southern European poor, poor class, peasants, right? And, but the thing is, just like anything else, we make it look cool. We make it attractive because people are attracted to us because everything we do, they like, right? So now that we're famous for their own, for your white Western culture, we just simply because it's not, through no fault of our own, everybody who was around these groups of people picked up that same level of class. Even the Chinese when they came over here, same thing. Chinese have a level, have their own type of class, but they have their own peasants, right? But when the Chinese peasants were brought over here and they were forced to live and, and, and be around these poor white people, they picked up the traits of these southern, uh, these southern Europeans. Because in the south of America, most of them came from the United uh, United Kingdom. Northern America, you had the Germans, some Russians, the Dutch, different enclaves, right? Like Bush Gardens, right? If you go to Bush Garden, Virginia, that particular part, there was the Dutch, right? The Dutch, that, that area was Dutch. Even if you go there now, you could tell that it's, it doesn't even seem like these Europeans are so much different from the other Europeans. Then you got the Quakers, and you got, the, you got various different type of Europeans. They have different cultures. But the one specific culture, is that British, you know, that London, that UK, that Southern European, poor, poor peasant class culture, which we picked up because that's where we resided. And because of that, and because we're so awesome as black people, we've always been awesome, right? We've made it look cool. What Will Smith say in my, in, in Men in Black? You know the difference between me and you? I make this look good. It's just the truth. That was a state, that's the true statement of the word. Everything we do compared to everybody else, we look good. You can't even lie and say that this is going to be, you can't lie and say black women don't look better in, in man, I'm going to say this and y'all know I'm true. I don't care if an Asian person watch this and say I'm being blah, blah, blah. Black people look better in Asian clothes than Asian people do. Don't we? We look better in everybody's clothes. We look better in everybody's stuff. We, when we do what everybody else does, we do it better. When we play somebody, their sports, we do it better. When we play chess, we do it better. We are, okay. Notice how we have history, right? Ancient history. Asian, Southern Asians, uh, uh, they have ancient history, right? Notice how Europeans don't actually have ancient history. They have Stonehenge, and they didn't even do that. So they make up stuff, right? They make up stories. There's, they don't go back that far, right? They don't have massive megaloid structures to go in and research. They don't have that, right? So, because all they did was fight each other and kill each other. They didn't have time to build massive structures because all they did was murder and, and kill each other. That's what they did for resources. They didn't have the time. In order to build large structures, you need a, a extended, an extended amount of peace in order to have enough workers to build megalith megalithic structures. That means you have arrived in civil, um, in, in, in civil society to be able to construct such you know, such magnificent designs, right? Europeans didn't get to do that until recently after they lazily took us to do all their work, made the Indians do all their work, made the Chinese do all their work, while they, you know, the aristocrats had the money and the time to do those things while making war with everybody else. But because we make it look cool, everybody sees it and it equates that culture, that European culture with us, right? And, and, and it's, not, it's not a culture of class. And the thing is, Africans, right? African people, before white people, we had class. As a matter of fact, we invented class. We invented prestige. That's our stuff, right? And what I like is Africans on the continent, you know, you know, a lot of them have class. Those tribes that we always, people like to say tribes. Let me tell you something about tribes. We can easily replace tribes with the word kingdoms. Europeans like to say tribes because it sounds more primitive right but in actuality these tribes were kingdoms and the kingdoms are still there with the kings and the royal court class <laughs> okay i am a part of that 
I'm a part of the upper class of the Yorba kingdom now. Right? And they carry themselves with class. When you see the when you see the Yoruba, Yoruba chiefs walking around the village, they don't have to be rich. Understand class and wealth are two different things. You don't have to be rich. You walk around your village, even if y'all don't have a lot of resources, you walk around with class. And because you have that class, you get that respect. And everybody has their level of class in which they adhere to. Because this is part of your dignity as a human being. African people. One good thing about African people is they have not lost their class. We may have lost our way, but we still have our class. And on the continent, you see our class in its purest form. We don't attempt to 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 utilize the European class. Now, you may see some of the the European influences in the court system wearing that stupid hat. But you know what's funny about that wig? Let me tell you about that wig, right? As stupid as that damn wig looks on those beautiful black people's heads over there in Europe, right? Looks just as stupid when, uh, you know, black women over here put them stupid ass white and Asian thing mops on the top of their goddamn head, so they shouldn't really be talking about any African in their judge hats when they wear that stupid ass white freaking mop on their got blonde mop on their head looking all retarded and shit. But when you see that stupid white thing on their head, right? That fake hair, right? And it looks so goddamn ridiculous, right? But to them, it's class. It's a part of the European class. It's just something that they forced upon us, right? That one of the one of the many infections we have not, you know, we're attempting to pluck off. And not all the court systems do that anymore. Some of them have gotten rid of it. They've, you know, moved on to their own form of African class amongst their uh, judicial judges and lawyers and things like that. Not all of them do that, but some of them still do. You know, the the European actually got that from ancient Africa. You see, they were trying to attempt, white people were attempting to do this. White people, when they did that hair shit, they were attempting to do this. They want an African class. You see, white people want African class. They saw how classy we were and they stole it from us. They stole our classy symbols, our classy, our classy spiritual system. They stole our classy everything. Washington, D.C., the way the, the whole city's built is a reconstruction of, of ancient Egypt and Nubia. Greece is just a reconstruction of ancient Egypt, Kemet, and Nubia. Nubia, right? But they all, they like to leave that out. As in Nubia don't have sphinxes and pyramids and and the same megalithic structures as Egypt. As, as we go further and get closer to Uganda, as we don't see the same consistent culture, buildings and structures and architecture. But, you know, whatever. They use cognitive dissident to you know, everybody like to use that word, but they do use that. That's one of the things Europeans use to build their, and manufacture their own history and all that stuff. But, so, they tried to attempt to do this, right? This, dreadlocks, or braids. So they took this, made their stupid white wigs, right? Look at the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church in the Vatican is the European perverted recreation of Egypt and Nubia. From their symbols, their signs, their hats, the way they're, their robes, everything is a white Western photocopy of the Egyptian and, and Nubian culture and religion. They stole, they made, they stole it, concentrated it on there, and then the Catholic Church became the crux of, of white power amongst the world. Because they're still the ones with the white power. They're still the epicenter of white power. The only people that challenge them are the Anglo-Saxon. Uh, uh, the, the other church they made and they ward who's more powerful, but the Catholic Church is still the most powerful. They still pull the levers and strings and things like that, right? It ain't Israel, it's the Catholic Church. That Vatican right there. That Vatican is a thousand times more 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 um influential and powerful and rich than and than Israel. Right? But back to class. They stole our class and then they you know and then the, and then the French and then it just gets more perverted as we go north. Right? But the thing is before all of that happened, Africans had class. Right? That's because we valued ourselves. And we started to value the wrong thing. Now we value poor peasant European culture. Poor peasant European culture is the height of black excellence to some black people. Right? To where when you see a Carlton Banks, you think he's a square. When you see somebody speaking what they consider proper English 
or effective communicational skills. You call it white because you don't even equate any type of class with blackness because you because the only thing highlighted is the poor peasant culture only simply because we make it look cool simply because they took one of the skills that black people have is to sing like an angel to rap and, and to 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 use poems like an angel right they mixed it with poor peasant class and then we have hip-hop right they took a gift they took a gift that the world knows we have right our oratory skills people always say ah they think writing in in oratory like they think writing is more advanced than oratory skills that's why they say oh Africans didn't write anything they were just talking right we sophisticated Europeans are writing well guess what in age of information we found out that no in fact Africans have been writing for thousands and thousands of years way before any European even could read Africans valued education way before Europeans even cared and we have on top of our writing skills on top of our science and archaeology and astrology and all the things that we were doing all the scientists we invented all the civilization we created all the structures we manufactured all the all the professional armies and, 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 and governmental systems we created but despite all that we still had the, the greatest oratory skills on the planet we still have the greatest oratory skills on the planet we know how to use our vibration better than anybody and we're famous for it if you look at your if you look at european culture right look at the things they create in their entertainment the things that they manifest in their in their fantasies right when you look at and i always thought this may be a conspiracy this part right here is my conspiracy theory if you ever notice that the elves Whenever, whenever they're in Middle Earth and they, they're talking about these little, these these histories they wish they had, right? In Middle Earth, have you ever noticed that the elves, right, were always like the humans but just slightly better? They always was just slightly taller. All of them just seem to look good, right? Now, of course, in most of their movies they make them super pale, but they make them super pale in a, like a weird, beautiful way. They try to make them extra white or different from the humans, but they're not human. But they can be with humans, they can make they can make babies with humans, they can they they can everything almost like humans, but they're always they was always just a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. Their twitch muscles was always better. They were better warriors, better archers. They was matter of fact, they were known for their archery, right? And then for some reason, when Middle Earth in every one of their series and movies, those elves, right, would get back on their boats and leave and go back home somewhere and it was always a sunny place a beautiful place they will always leave and then leave let leave europe the earth in the, in the europe uh eurosphere to the white man to the man right and then it was the age of the man right and i've always looked at it like you know what i feel like they're using l's as an analogy for black people and i know i'm not crazy because they do it a lot in their movies Look at Avatar. Avatar was basically East Africans, East and Central Africans. They just painted them blue. All the clothes, everything, even the spirituality was Africans. They just covered it up by painting them blue. And they show themselves going there, killing them and stealing their resources. Even though they feel bad about it, they know it's wrong, but they do it culturally anyway. And then, you know, and if you just think about the movies that they make, there's always some more fit, athletic, spiritually connected, advanced race that they themselves destroy and steal their resources by doing something dubious. And then they just, and then that's it, right? I've always thought that Europeans manifest in their minds, since we do live rent free, we've always lived rent free in their minds because they've always valued us over them secretly in their head. Because they can't live without us. They can't live without us. They sweat us, right? They want us badly in their own European perverted way. They don't want us to go. They don't want us to stay and they don't want us to go. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, right? I think, I think they've been manifesting us in their fantasies by using elves and shit. And various other mythical creatures. You know, even if you look at their super, even if you look at how they created the superheroes, 
What is the their number one superhero? How does he get his powers? What is the thing that gives him power? The sun. They love making that sun the source of power, but we all know that the sun is the enemy of that same Anglo-Saxon. We know that, right? We know the sun's the enemy of the Anglo-Saxon. And we know that Europeans just recently decided to make the Mediterraneans white. When in fact, Mediterraneans are not white. Not the original Mediterraneans. I've been to the Mediterranean. And when I got there, I noticed that they weren't white. Except for the people from, from Europe. Because there's a distinction. When I went to, when I was in the Malta, when I was in Spain, they made it very clear that you have people from Germany, people from Anglo-Saxon, European, and Scandinavian countries who have moved down here. And they are different from the Mediterraneans, who are clearly brown. They are all brown. Brown, like me, or darker. That's what a Mediterranean really looks like, a real Mediterranean. But you see, that's not represented on TV. Just like when you watch Telemundo, you don't see real native Central and South Americans on Telemundo unless they're being the com comedic relief. They'll get the shortest, darkest person. He'll be the comedic relief. But it looks, it's nothing but a bunch of white people from Europe that call themselves Latinos. It's the same thing in India. When you watch uh, Indian movies, when you watch Bollywood, right? You see a bunch of pale skin Indians and they make you believe that's what an Indian looked like. But that's not what Indians look like. Indians are dark skinned. Dark skinned. Original Indians are very dark skinned. Very dark skinned people. Right? But you wouldn't know that if you were to watch that. Because white people, if they control the media, they control the story, they control the narrative. Right? That's why, and they tried to do the same thing with Egypt. They tried to tell you a bunch of people that can barely come outside during the sun without boiling and catching skin cancer that they lived in one of the hottest places in the world where the sun refracts off the sand and creates an extra sense, an extra, uh, an extra area of, of heat and humidity at which white people really can't stand unless they have some sort of highly advanced mayonnaise to put on their skin or air conditioning or advanced clothing that, weren't, that wasn't around back then. So they won't die in the sun. I mean, it's obvious. It's so obvious, right? So all I'm saying is we need to, we need to retake our class. While we take retaking our, our, our culture, that has the class, you see, this right here, <laughs> this is class. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I, I, this is professional. They even try to tell us what professional looks like. Profe to them, professional is conforming to whiteness. That's what professional is. That's what they mean. That's why when I hear a black person tell me to cut my hair, I look at them and I, and I look at them automatically. My first thought is you're a coon and you want me to conform to whiteness to make them comfortable. Right? So when I hear people say to black people, they need to cut their hair and da 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 da. I'm like, oh, so you want us to be more like white people? You want make it so they can accept you? You want to, no, you want to be accepted. That's what it is, right? You don't see the class in your hair. You don't see the you don't see the beauty in in the in the in the frizz. How the sun makes your hair stand up, like when you go outside, how your hair seems like it wants to just float away. It wants to is attracted to the sun. How it just goes in every different direction and complicated coils. Something they can't do with their hair. Their hair just goes down. That's where their hair goes down. While our hair goes up. And I value that. And that's something we have to stick into our heads. Black people, our dress is classy. We even got those same black people make fun of dashikis as if some sort of novelty clothing wear, right? No. It's professional and classy wear. You see these patterns? This is class. You see this? You see this? This is valuable. This is real. This is real jewelry. This is African jewelry. This is this is more this is more expensive and better than anything them Europeans got. What are you talking about? What? Class. And if we start walking around with some class and respect about ourselves and professionalism and embracing and and honoring and valuing our blackness and everything that's truly black in origin. You Europeans ain't gonna maybe do nothing. Your kid will walk around with his chin up, proud, like you know what. And so when a European looks at him and says something slight, instead of just responding from a victim's point of view, right? Oh, I'm being attacked. We'll be looking down, like. Huh. That's how we need to be doing these folks. <laughs> you tricked me once. You tricked me twice. You won't trick me a third time. <laughs> That's how we need to be. 
we need to take our class back. We need to, that's one thing why we need to go back to Africa. And you need to see what black people look like in a black world with black class. And we need to reabsorb that and bring it back here to America and practice that. Best practices of African culture. We need to learn our languages. Now I'm gonna tell you, I would love to learn, I try my best to learn Yoruba. But to be honest, and it's really hard, especially with all the stuff that I do, all the effort I put into my, you know, teaching people about, about history and trying to be an ambassador for the African American tribe towards the African, um, different African kingdoms and people groups over there, you know, trying to represent my people the best I can. So people, when they see African Americans, they can see one with class. Not a Pookie and a Ray Ray, but one with class. That has locks, right? Unapologetically African, right? They need to see that, right? So I don't have the actual intellectual time to really truly dive down and learn. I don't have that talent. I understand my limitations. I don't have that ex exceptional talent to pick up languages easy. I just don't. And I don't have the time or the space to do it. So I just pick it up as I go along and hopefully I'll know more. And, but I know for sure I'll make sure that my children know how to speak it. That's for sure. Right? I'll make sure of that. So, you know, we need to learn our language. But those who are talented, we need to learn that. Learn our various different West African languages and East African languages and Central African languages. Our Niger, our, our Nilo Congo languages, you know, groups, right? We need to learn how to wear our clothes with pride. Our African clothes, that pride that allows us to breathe. Right? You ever notice how African people in, in America, we like to wear loose fitting clothes, right? Minus this weird trend with these tight pants that's too tight, yet they still falling off your ass. How you gonna have, how you gonna have pants that's too tight and still falling off your ass? That boggles my mind, but shit, whatever, style, right? But for the most part, we like loose clothing. Why? Because that's just, it's more comfortable. We like to breathe because we're people of the sun, right? This is classy. You can't tell me nothing. I walk, I'll go anywhere in this country wearing something like this and dare somebody to say something. Dare somebody to tell me I'm, I'm dressing inappropriate. I'm not dressing appropriate. I'm not casual. Huh. They can kiss my black classy ass. Because I know my value. So, because they don't know my value, that's not my problem. You understand? And that's how we need to roll. We need to be indifferent to the, what they think. And we need to roll with our black African class. All right, that's what we need to do. We need to pick our class up. Anyway, I think I got my point across. I just want you black people to take your class back. Get rid of that white Western European version of class and pick up your African class. Pick up that African class and wear it with pride and value it as an African. Okay? That's all I got to say for now, guys. It's Afro Think Tank. Learn something, teach something. I'm out.